so many church people have been employed by their entertainments that God can't yeah. send them into the harvest right. instead of making excuses. You should be doing exploits. Uh -huh. The Bible tells us in Daniel, what did Daniel do? Man, he fasted, he prayed. Right. Yes. Right. So, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. You want to know where your exploits are? Come on. On the other side, you're pushing away a lot of junk in your life. Yeah. You got it. Come on. Well, I don't know. Am I in the right church today? Yeah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Let's all stand for the reading of the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you right now, I just believe we are on the threshold of mighty things in God. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly, I've been around enough to not only see the problem. 
myself in my frailty, in my, my weaker side, my, my carnal side, wanting God to always step in and, 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 and do the miraculous where I've made mistakes. To step in where I've kind of sat down. To do for me what he's called me out for darkness to do for myself. I spoke about it Wednesday and mentioned about how sin could be eliminated if we just obeyed the, the first two commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all the heart, soul, mind, and strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. If we would do that, if we would do that as, as a humanity, sin would cease to exist. I know some of y'all think I'm out of my mind. But if you love God and you love your neighbor, you wouldn't do any of those things. No, 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 no. Bank robberies would stop. Terrorism would stop. Racism would stop. Right. Right. You stop your attitude. Yeah. So we have all those other commandments because we have to be legislated to. We do. Come on, you negotiate with your kids before God. It, it, uh -huh. it, 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 Instead of it's the right thing to clean the room. Right. Uh -huh. Maybe I'm the only one here that struggled with cleaning his room. I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't know. Uh -huh. Struggle with just doing no. what's right. Anybody yes. ever struggle with doing what's right? Yeah. Anybody just struggle with just the basics? Yeah. Uh, I'm in the right church. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. So I want to I want to go to the book of Acts, and I'm going to read a couple of verses. I'm in chapter 18, and I'm going to read the King James, and then I'm going to read the ESV. For word clarity. I'm going to speak for a little bit on there's more. There's more. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. You know what? It's okay to pray at night. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody ever wake up in the middle of the night to seek the face of God? Oh, yes. thank Amen. you, Jesus. Yes. Those are some of the best times. Yes. Be not afraid, but speak. And hold not thy peace. God doesn't want us forfeiting truth for peace. He doesn't want you to compromise. Right. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Hey, Dad. Hey, Father. Father's Day is next week. Show up having done what you set your house in order. We're just not going to allow that in here. We're not going to have something that's got a bunch of cuss words blaring out. We're not going to listen to something. Sexual demoralization of our women. Right. Amen. And the exploitation of our boys. Uh -huh. Are you hearing what Amen. I'm saying? Yeah. We're not going to have that garbage in our ears. I don't care what style of music you like. I want us to listen to what pleases God and not offend or breathes the spirit. Yeah. It's a sad day that even some of some of the, 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 the stalwart types will listen to stuff that would breathe God and yeah. we're okay with. not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace, for I am with you. Right. Paul's in the middle of a storm. He's in the middle of just doing the work of God. He's being resisted every corner, even by church folks. Uh -huh. And no man shall sit on me to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. The ESV states it this way, which is the English Standard Version. Some of you probably have the NIV or NKJV. Or, and if you don't even know what I'm talking about, then it's in the other church. And the Lord said to Paul, Sunday evening, when Brown was about 12 years old, he was walking with his father in London, and the 
his father took him for a life-changing experience. He surprised young grandma by taking him and showing him the inside of a saloon. The place was crowded with people. Many were already drunk. The atmosphere was filled with the fumes of alcohol and tobacco. That smoky room was a buzz of careless laughter, cursing, echoed throughout. Grandma's father turned to his son and said, These are the people that God has charged us with reaching with the gospel of Jesus Christ, with the truth. There is nothing greater that you and I can give our life to than the commission from God to do as well. This is our corner. This is our spot. This is our place. Especially if you call yourself a minister. You have to ask yourself, not affirmation from a move of God or some accolade or something on the wall or a title, but the activity of your life declares your ministry. Did you realize that this is the spot that God placed us and he's looking for us to reach them? This is our part of the Sea of Salts where we are to cast our nets. These are the people that we will reach for the glory in the name of Jesus. We do a lot of things for a lot of reasons, but there's no greater than the glory of God. They are our people. But more importantly, they're God's people. They're His. There are people services online. But God is dealing with them. The Spirit of God is drawing them. And like you, before you ever got here, God was working on you and in your life. Right. Yes. I've said it before, I said God has been working with people long before they ever got in your, your life. Yeah. So you would act like you're their answer. You're not. God is. You're a part of the answer, but yeah. He's still the whole answer because they are his people. Yeah. Corinth was an ancient city founded on the natural trade route with an amazing shipping harbor of its day. The ancient city was destroyed by the Romans in about 147 BC but rebuilt by Julius Caesar a century later. That restored and rebuilt Corinth exceeded all the cities of the world at that day for its splendor, its magnificence, its opulence. Its public buildings and vats were embellished with beautiful columns that gave birth to the era of Corinthian order and architecture. We've got a few pillars sitting out that are reminiscent of that. The Corinthian architecture is highly regarded as the face of Roman architecture, as a commercial route between east and west, its markets, world renowned. It was a bustling place of activity, busyness, and culture. According to history, Corinth became a leading city of Greece. 
being the major city of the Roman province of the Chaos. Corinth was the seat of the Roman proconsul, a place of importance, opulence, politics. It was known for its wealth, its luxury, with a busy commercial and industrial center boasting a population of almost a million people. So, however, with all that human activity and achievement, Corinth was renowned for city that epitomized the decadence of the Greek world. It is likely that the open display of moral depravity in Corinth led Paul to pay his letter to the Romans, who read the book of Romans, where he graphically described the step-by-step -step degradation of people and that society. The city was the site of the great temple of Aphrodite, whose priestesses were known as sacred prostitutes. Freely roam the streets. Heaven is eternal. So notorious was this city for its lewd conduct that the verb Corinthize came to signify the act of being a lady of the night. And the phrase a Corinthian girl was synonymous with the term harlot. Paul stated in his letters to Corinth that their immoral lifestyles were unparalleled in all of Greece. And in Acts 16 and 9, however, Paul responded to a vision from God calling him to Macedonia. The fulfillment of that calling would lead Paul to establish churches in Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea, and we know he was in Athens before finally turning his attention to Corinth. Wow. Corinth proved to be the proving here, Paul experienced the worst obstacles he had yet faced. But it was here also that Paul had his greatest breakthrough in his first missionary journey. The text that I read to you in Acts 18, 9 and 10, Paul is in the process of trying or endeavoring to evangelize Corinth. He's trying to evangelize that city, that place I Described to you. In fact, we catch small glimpses of his ministry in the context of Acts 18. We know that from Scripture, that he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. And he tried to persuade the Jews and the Greeks. You see, cultural division is not good. Yeah. Right. People picking sides and division and immorality is not new. We also know that they opposed Paul. They reviled, hated, despised, and gave him a hard time. So much to the extent that at one time he shook his garments and said, Your blood be upon your heads. I'm innocent. Got a little frustrated doing little Bobby stuff. <laughs> Got a little frustrated and started preaching a little bit. Just trying to help somebody, trying to save somebody. I know y'all never get past her. Hard time. You don't struggle with the truth. You're all in from the get go. You're never going to get upset with the pastor and the preacher. <laughs> in fact, that, that, it actually goes like this. It says in Acts 18, 5, 6, this is the KJV that I read. And when Silas and we know who Timotheus is, were coming to Macedonia. So he's not by himself. He's got some help here. Right. Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth. I come to the Gentile. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll just say it's a bad day when pastors done dealing with you. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's right. Yeah. When the very person that God has anointed and yeah. called, and I'm not trying to blow my horn, trust me. If I could get out of this, I'd do it right now. <laughs> huh. yeah. the, yeah. I, I hear more preaching than probably anybody in this building. I get preached to all the time. I listen to preaching on purpose. Because right. I want to preach to others and be a castaway. There's a lot in there, folks. There's a lot to live up to. Right. I'm glad that I understand that it's not in being perfect, but it's in the pursuit. See, you're in a bad way as a minister that once you sideline pursuing God that you start chasing activities, hobbies, and fun right. time, mm -hmm. and you're not really seeking Him to right. be used of Him. Right. Because there's no retirement in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. You either backslide or you go forward. Mm -hmm. 
first time. Paul and his humanity, and we know he did if you read Romans chapter 7, Paul had a little bit to deal with. Come on, guys, I'm trying to get past your little slack here because I know sometimes you're going to see a sight. Ooh, you dropped an attitude with me. I'm good. Yeah. Right. I'm not on point every day. <laughs> right. You all heard that saying. I'm here to help you, but today's just not your day. <laughs> I have those too. And, and that absolutely beautiful lady, Sister Crow, an amazing pastor's wife, an amazing first lady. Hey, I was with her this Sunday. It ain't my day. <laughs> <laughs> so we have you that look just past my hand and say, well, oh, buddy, I'm sorry, but there's some days it's not going to be your day. <laughs> you know, we come on, we all know this. We all know the day that we really need to flag loose on our parents. We try to smooth in before we try to. Yeah. 
think you got it all together. Yes, come, let's tell the truth and say to God, you know. Yeah. Oh, I know y'all fine. You got it all down. You, you, got, you got a washed car outside, probably. Huh. God didn't pull uh -huh. some strays in your life. You wouldn't have a car. Right. Shut your right. mouth now. Don't right. quit now. Don't stop because it's frustrating. Don't stop right. because there's other things that can take your mind or life and that. Don't stop now. I got people right. here, Paul. Yeah. I got people that I love. Yeah. And don't lose that burden that you right. had at the beginning. Don't forget yeah. I had you on the road to Damascus yeah. and you yeah. called me Lord and you were willing to do it. Why? You hit a little obstacle. You got some frustration. Life may have not worked out. Exactly as you want it. Right. But don't stop speaking. Amen. I got a bunch of balls here for you to reach. Oh, I got a bunch of seeds. I got a bunch of twists. I got yeah. 
to a soul? Are you willing to speak? Are you willing to go? Because there's more. Yes. There is people he longs to save them. He chose the church. He chose the likes of you and I to be the church to go and reach the lost. John 10 and 16 contains a statement by Jesus that needs to resonate in our hearts, in our spirit. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Standing in the temple to the disciples, Jesus says, I have sheep yeah. that are not of this fold, I, got I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. Right. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. The word fold was translated from, a, from the word for court. It's likely he made this statement as Jesus yeah. was standing in the inner court of the temple and he referred to the outer court, mm -hmm. the court of the Gentiles, as he made this comment. Looking out, there's more. They're out there because laws don't permit them. The Gentiles were proselytes of the gate. They were allowed to worship in the outer court, but they weren't allowed in the inner court. Right. It is possible that as Jesus made this statement in reference to the Gentiles in the earth, them, that one that you won't accept. You don't like how that one looks. You don't like how that one talks. I, I, I'm talking about them. One thing that's sure when he spoke these words in the context in which they were spoken, it's obvious to his listeners that he was referencing the Gentiles. And every one of us should be thankful for that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The thing that really stands out to me here is not that Jesus pointed out the fact that he came also for the Gentiles, but rather the statement.
He says, they're my people. They're my people now, but one day they'll be my saints too. They cuss them now, but they'll be proclaiming the gospel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 They're smoking dab now, yeah. but they'll be smoking hot for truth. Yeah. Oh. Thanks. 
Steve God loves you. And he dragged my, my young carcass to church. <laughs> and now he pastors in South Carolina, and I pass through right here. God's Bye. not worship. Someone else's name is on that, so now I'm just going to uh -huh. close up my bowels with mercy. Uh -huh. That happens. Yeah, that's true. They're ready to change their lives. They're so not there right now. You're going to run across this week, especially if you'll ask God to see them, that God's ready to change their people. He's ready to turn their world upside down. They're yeah. desperate for something real. Yeah. They're desperate for what you feel in here. They're desperate yeah. for this. They're desperate for the liberty and the release of all the bondage. Tired. 
Some of them are successful by world standards. They've got everything money can buy, but the dirty little secret is they realize I'm still not happy. Right. Yeah. Their soul longs, their soul wants, and they desire for something. They don't, they don't even know what it is. And there's a genuine hunger in their soul that's stirring, and their hearts are desiring. And it's our job.
hey, don't do this. Because you think you're the end all instead of letting God be the end. Right. Right. Because you think you can doctor the pastor or say God and get your little opinions and comments. And you, they're afraid. They're afraid to give themselves to God now because they don't want to upset you. sitting in his chair and read his eyes the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, can you hear God? Are you humble? Are you ready? Are you, are you of a mind that God's not done and there's more? Are you ready to be used? Are you ready to find that place in an altar for God to renew you and restore you to be an evangelist of truth? Go here and join thyself to the chair. God has got people he wants to reach. If you'll get back into the mindset and be ready to go because you Oh, there's more. Yeah. God's not kidding. Yeah. He's got the There may be someone in here that reaches your right. family. Yeah. There may be somebody here that might be used to God you wouldn't have yeah. done yeah. You want to get behind the church. Yeah. You want to get in the church. Yeah. You want to get involved yeah. because you're ready to turn yeah. into your own life. Yeah. 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 Philip ran. Huh. He didn't hand her. He didn't dog her. Understandest what thou readest? Right. And here's a guy who had charge. He was overseer of more finances than anybody in here could ever imagine. How can I? Except oh. some man should die. Oh, right. All for a revival of real humility. Yeah. And he desired Philip that he would come up and see if there's somebody. There's somebody that just needs to be invited to lunch. Oh, prefer a cup of God. Just someone. There's someone right now in your life, in your family. That simply needs a conversation with a child of God. And he's the old people's home. He was hungry for God, but he didn't know where to go. He didn't know what to do. God sees him. He sees all of them out there right now, just like this guy. Then he grabbed Philip. Then he could have filled him. Oh, let me have some Philip 
us in here today. God picked up Philip and deposited him where the eunuch was so that Philip could open his understanding and teach him truth from Scripture. I tell you right now, there is no shortage of hungry people. Right. Jesus would have asked his disciples to pray for the harvest. He didn't ask that. It's all saying. Instead, he instructed them to pray for laborers. Believers. Saints of God. See that they're able to push away all the weights and the sins and the things that just keep them from a close walk with God. Oh. Labor's labor. Why? Because there are more. There are sinners that are supposed to be sheep. Right. They're desperate. share the truth with them. Yeah. How many? How many? Right. How many are in our city? How many are within your reach? Because I believe when he looks at Phoenix, when he looks at Lincoln, when he looks at Arizona City, Send her your way. 
It's going to make you cuss. Oh. Anybody want to be a laborer? Anybody yeah. realize that God has more? Anybody, anybody want to get back involved in the kingdom of God and switching the side? 